armed and dangerous, operating outside of the law. I know gangsters like the back of my hand. They're mad, they're bad, and they're extremely dangerous. But what is it that draws women to them? To share their roller coaster lifestyles with all its ups and downs. Gucci, Prada, DKNY, Hugo Boss, Dior, definite favourite. But you just can't have an opinion. You just can't. We've read the books and we've seen the films, so we think we know all about their world. But what about their women? What have they got to say for themselves? Everyone likes a bit of recklessness in their lives. Life can get a bit boring otherwise. This is their story. I look at him sometimes and I think, oh, don't die on me, babe. I wanted to love me. I'm Kate Cray, and I was married to one of the most notorious gangsters in British history, the infamous Ronnie Cray. Being a Cray opened doors to the dark underbelly of the criminal world. I'm stepping back into that underworld to talk to the women behind these men. My manor, London's East End, home to the blind beggar, a pub synonymous with a Cray name. I'm here to meet my dear friend Flanagan. Flanagan's been around more gangsters than Al Capone and she knows all there is to know about gangsters' wives. We go back a long way. I married Ronnie and Flan nearly married Reggie. You could have been my sister-in-law. You'd have been in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, that's true. Mm -hmm. Let's go back a bit. I mean, how, mm. how did you get to meet him? How did you know the family? To get the whole family? Well, I was Mrs Cray's hairdresser, who was a lovely old lady, and um, I used to go home to do her hair. That's how I met the twins, that's how I met Charlie. So I really got to know the whole family and um, a lot of secrets. So when you was in the house and all three of them was there, did you feel the danger and the, the charisma that surrounded them? Because I certainly felt that. Well, of course I did, and I felt the danger because the whole street, when they both arrived, the twins arrived, the whole street was lined with limos, you know. They had about 15 guys at any given time, you know, either walking to meet them at Mrs Cray's house or arriving in cars. And I also felt that there was a great aura around them, especially Ronnie. So tell me how you got to be with Reggie, really, then. Mm. How did he fall in love with you? <laughs> I don't know. I think he looked at the legs, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> when did he first <laughs> notice your legs? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think you saw him in a lot of newspapers, a lot of magazines. I was doing a lot of modelling at the time, a lot of the Benny Hill shows and Monty Python things. I've always taken great care of myself and my hair. It was my profession, so it, that came easy to me. But I could never go to visit them in trousers. They specified that. I used to go in a mink coat. They had the blonde who always had the furs on. She had diamonds on. She was kept looking beautiful. She was kept looking well. And that's what they like to have on their arm. Two and a half carrots there. Six Is that diamonds. Gangster Dead that bought that one? <laughs> <laughs> no, th uh, this gentleman's still alive. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> and this one came. This one. This one is Ronnie's, isn't it? That's, uh, Ronnie bought me that when we... It was like an engagement ring, but I've never mm -hmm. worn it as an engagement, engagement ring. ring. No, it's, it's nice on... Cartier, no, no, because it's nice on your little finger. Reggie never did manage to get a rock on her finger, but not for the lack of trying. He proposed to her three times. Maybe I should have married Reggie Cray then. What do you think? would have given me so much aggravation of all the things you had to do while they were in there. You are telling me? Yeah. Have you ever been arrested? Only once. I'd know this Hatton Garden diamond merchant, um, who, fun enough, made this engagement ring. And apparently he'd done something very, very naughty for a million pounds worth of stones. And I think they thought that he'd sort of given them to me to look after. And I was raided at six o'clock in the morning and... My... Stop it! I've got to put my makeup on first. <laughs> I cannot go out looking like this. That's right, I did brush my hair. <laughs> Fortunately, we were innocent. Here we are, looking at diamonds. That's from Versace. You wicked, wicked oh, man, you. I know exactly what a suit, oh. Flanagan. <laughs> well, it is nice, Michelle. Now, how much would that cost? If you've got to ask. Uh, 17,287 pounds. 17? Seven... No, I didn't 17. think that's bad. Oh, Michelle, what's the use of having it if you can't show it? Indeed. 
Is it glamorous? Is it glamorous being with a gangster? Yeah, we might have been allowed to drink a gin. Yeah, but you're not allowed to go to the bar. Oh, no, we can't go to the bar. <laughs> oh, God, no. And you couldn't dance with anybody in a dance hall. We were allowed to go there, but we were allowed to sit there with the other wives. You sat there and you spoke. And if there was a little 18-year-old, like the new girlfriend of a gangster son, we'll say, you know, and she was being a bit too loud, or she'd go to the bar, or she was flirting with some good-looking guy or some heavy-looking guy, and I'd sit with her for a little while and say, please, keep it down, that's not how you behave. Because I've seen the most dreadful things happen with flirts. There's, you know, a guy really thinks that another guy's taking liberties with his woman, and that's not how gangsters behave. Do you think that it was an unspoken um, word that you know the rules? Because there's lots and lots of rules when you're with a gangster. Well, if you well. didn't know the rules, somebody soon taught you. Flan's old school. But what about the new generation of gangsters' wives? Do they live by the same set of rules? <laughs> Has he told you the rules? A few, yeah. <laughs> Rule one, keep stum. <laughs> Rule two, look good. Any man wants a good looking girl on his arm. So what if she was to put on really loads of weight then? Oh, she'd be straight out of the door. Rule three, pamper your man. That man is so spoiled. I thought he, he was going to say no. No, he doesn't lift a finger. Rule four, uh-uh, no flirting. I've got a tracker installed in every pair of her drawers. I know exactly where she goes. Follow her in a motor, <laughs> straight back. Rule five, the biggie, respect. I do that out of respect. I do this out of respect because I don't want to argue with him. So far, so good. The old values still apply today. But what's the reality of really living the gangster's wife style? Young or old, there's three words that sum up a gangster's code. Tradition, reputation and respect. So let's see how they're living their code today. Stephen Amaya's beautiful new home shows he's an <coughs> entrepreneur. And I'm interested to know what attracted Amaya to his world. Have you ever been out with um, a guy like Steve before? <coughs> and when I say a man like Steve, I mean... A bit of a gangster type. No. You haven't? Never. No. Yeah, but he's a bit of a monster, isn't he? I don't see that, because I suppose I see him all the time, and, but, yeah. He gets <laughs> I know, but I know, but everyone comments. I'm like, oh, it's my Steve at the end of the day, you know? No. Yeah. What I look for is exactly what I find in Amaya. I mean, she's got, like, a fantastic personality, never lets me down, always there. And, um, yeah, it just makes me feel like I'm the number one, and that's that. <laughs> <laughs> And in the back of my mind, I look at him sometimes and I think, oh, the things that he gets up to. Because <coughs> he's not your average nine to fiver. <coughs> I think to myself, oh, don't die on me, babe. <coughs> but I keep that really to myself. Without going into sort of what you do, I don't really want to sort of pry too much in what you do, but has your life ever been in, in danger itself? Have you ever been stabbed? A couple of times. Have you ever been shot? Once. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Did you want to see? No! <laughs> <laughs> Good God! Um, shot in the head. Uh, lucky to survive that one. It was um, uh, very close quarters. Um, about four foot, in fact. It's only, four foot? Yeah, it's only like a door that saved me, but... It was just one of them things, it wasn't meant for me, but... Do you know he's been shot? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I still carry a lot around in my head now. They, they, they stick out like little lumps, can't they? Yeah. yeah, they do, yeah. Do they? Yeah. Do you like the danger of it all, though? I suppose there's a bit of a milk tray man in all of us, isn't there? But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Which is the biggest part of Steve? Is it the armed and dangerous Steve, or is it the... Cuddly honey monster Steve. I'll say the arms and dangerous type. Was you aware of his reputation or did he tell you of his reputation? I didn't have a clue. Didn't know, he was just a normal guy. Oh, bless. Yeah. Bless. Yeah, just a normal guy. And then obviously, yeah, then you realise going out. Well, like the first time I took her down Mill Wall, you know, it's all totally new to her. 
They've been to a football match before. We we'll walk in and there's me with my leopard skin umbrella and I'm walking and it's and I'm looking at all the faces. Just the way you guys are coming out of the woodwork, one looks say hello, meet ya. And they're a bit uh mm, and a bit uh mm, and a bit uh mm, like that. You know, some of them all look like they've been run over by a tipper truck. And he's like, all right, all right, all right, Stevie, all right, Stevie, all right. And they all know him. And uh, it threw her. I did throw her, but uh, ah, she, she takes it all in her stride. And I don't actually go to watch the game, I go to watch him, because he goes absolutely crazy, and when they lose, he's great. Because I snigger, 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 because he's going right into one. All of a sudden, he's like, you know when is it Superman or Spider-Man or one of them, they rip for their shirt, the Incredible Hulk, and it's like that. And you can see, and he goes like, yeah, it's great. Does his it whole face change? Yeah, well, he has this look. Oh, don't look at me like that. I'm scared of you. It's like... <laughs> like that. No, 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 it's not. It's more. Yeah. Like that. Is it? No, not that. <laughs> yeah, you know, like... <laughs> it's great. I love it. The thing with Steve is, like anything, he can have a row with a smile on his face. Oh, yeah. But never be fooled by that smile. Never. Ooh, yeah. a smiling yeah, viper. That's it, yeah. <laughs> What does the lovely Amaya make of your entourage? My entourage? She laughs. So when he goes yeah. into this room and he's got all these big chaps and you draped over his yeah. arm... Yeah. It's lovely. But she does think a lot of them are scary. Does she? Mm. She likes the fact that I've got a lot of people wrapped around me and it's, it's a lot safe. of respect. It's she safe. Feels safe. Yeah, she feels very really safe. Yeah, it's nice. It is it's nice. Lovely. Yeah, it's lovely. <laughs> I love it. It's yeah. lovely. <laughs> so if you're out with Amaya and you're in a club or something and you're chatting with your pals, would you allow her to go up to the bar to buy a drink? No, no, I'd normally either I'd go up or one of the fellas would go up. Uh, no, he'll go. If you think that someone was getting a bit, uh, you know, a bit too close in around your I, space, her space... I, I don't have it. No, that's when a little jealousy creeps up. She's a lot more jealous of, of me. We went out the other night and um, I'm standing there, he's there and there's a few of us there and uh, this girl... Just wanted to know, uh, what are you doing tonight when you get rid of your Klingons? Huh? Anyway, we were laughing. She was like that. She's half Spanish, you know. She's got that half of Spanish tongue on her. No one pulls a wool over her eyes. She stands her ground, talks her, talks her way out of anything. If she come to you and said, someone's really disrespected me, mm. would you go and eat their head? Yeah. 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 Would you? It'd be rude not to. You know, there does come the times, you know, the old red mist creeps up and... At that type of occasion, yeah. Then it you would. Know, wild horses wouldn't drag me back. I've seen some fierce chats, you know, like... Fierce chats? I've never heard them called that before. <laughs> I mean, there's been occasions when we've been out and you get the odd Burke interferes with us in our company or, or, or oversteps a mark. And it's like, ooh. <laughs> yeah. And then she does see the other side of me. Would yeah. he just say to one of his men... Yeah, yeah, just take, take her, her away. away. It's one of the boys to take her away or, or, or whatever. But she deals with things spot on, you know, she surprised me. Yeah. If you go to the loo, yeah. does he, like, keep his he eye He knows on you? where I am 101%. I've got a tracker installed in every pair of her drawers. I know exactly where she goes. Follow her in the motor, <laughs> straight back. Do you like yeah. that? Yeah, of course I do, yeah. Do you feel safe? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. You ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Has he told you the rules? A few, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Ah. Mm. <laughs> so what if she was to put on really loads of weight then? Oh, she'd be straight out of the door. <laughs> no, no. No, she is what she is. It's the person underneath she is, you know what I mean? She's the beautiful person underneath and outside. So, that's, you know, you can't be that shallow. So if she got fat, you wouldn't care? I would care. Yeah, of course would. I would, yeah, And yeah. you're the sister? Because I'd it's important to you, isn't it, how you look? I'd a sister. I'd wheel her around if she couldn't walk, if she was that fat. Um, straight down to the gym, onto the table. I'm sorry, but I've got to do this because I'm a woman. <laughs> <laughs> do you 
think that you've met your match with Amaya? Um, match as in... Has she got the tiger by the tail? Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, she yeah. looks after me. I need a lot of looking after. Does she? <laughs> she does look after me, yeah. Are you an old-fashioned man? I'm very old-fashioned. Do you think that you're an old-fashioned sort of girl and you're happy to stay at home with Steve while he's, Steve's off doing what he's got to do? And you're happy to be at home? I'm happy that way. I wouldn't want any other way. If you was to get sort of like a, your door kicked in in the middle of the night or if there's a little posse after you or, you know, if she was to be lifted by the old bill or something, have you had to tell her the rules? Oh, that's a funny one, though, cos um, Amaya is not from... I know. He's not from the background, he's not from... So that is funny. I think she just knows I, I can take care of that side of things, but... I mean, you know, you'd have a funny scenario over picking up a lamp going, OK, gosh, where do I go? Send me in. <laughs> because she would. But, no, I mean, I, I would never let it come to that. Obviously, the rules are, you know, you keep your mouth shut, you yeah. don't say this, you don't say that. And are you prepared for what comes with that? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I love him, yeah. You love her, don't you? Ah, oh, does it give it away in the eyes? So if he gets yeah. lifted and he gets ten? Yeah. Oh, yeah, she decided she'd wait. With his cup of coffee and his Weetabix. Yeah, but she might be able to handle it outside. Could you handle it inside? No, nah, no, nah, I'd be climbing the walls. Will you still need him? Will you still feed him when he's 64? 64. Of course. I love that song. <laughs> a lot of men, if they get a, a long time, if they got to put away for a long time, they say to the bird, I've got to cut you loose, cos I can't handle it. Mm, yeah, no, I, I don't know. I wouldn't handle that one. I find that a bit hard. But then I've got no plans on going away. Have you? No, I've got no plans going anywhere. <laughs> Amaya has chosen her man, and she knows the risks involved. But at the moment, times are good, and the living is easy. I know what your Christmas present is. Do you have any new bosoms? Oh, oh, oh yes, I know. He told me. No, I didn't even tell anybody. I've told you that as well, haven't I, Jack? Yes, I want a new pair. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> I don't want. <laughs> I know, but I just want him, like, a bit more, you know. Do you need anything new? Yeah, no, not in that department. Oh, stay. No. <laughs> <laughs> so is there anything else that you want other than new boobs for Christmas? Oh, I wouldn't mind a new, like, little Mercedes thing. Quite nice. I don't know what I'm going to get confused with the names, but a little Mercedes convertible would be quite nice. What do you think you buy it for you? Um, I don't know. Do you want to drop a hint? Yeah, I could do. I could sort of maybe dangle a catalogue in front of him or something. A catalogue? Yeah. <laughs> they don't do them in Argos. <laughs> <laughs> a brochure. brochure. <laughs> so this is not your only gaff, is it? No. Where we've else? got basically we've got one which is just on the Thames, which is quite nice. So you've got um, one, in the, one in the smoke and one in the sticks. Yes. And also obviously we're buying abroad next year. I always say you should have Frey Bentos tattooed on his knuckles, you know, like people have love and hate, because he's got his fingers in so many pies. <laughs> Stephen Amaya's lifestyle may seem attractive, but don't be fooled. This is often a brutal world, inhabited by violent men like Roy Shaw. A criminal record as long as your arm and 18 years in prison has given Roy a fearsome reputation. And yet, despite all this, Roy Pretty Boy Shaw is never without a beautiful woman draped over his arm. So what does a traditional gangster expect from his women? And what do they get in return? Wow, is this what she gets? No, she don't get this one. She, she, she gets that one. Oh, that's nice. Well, she, the roof comes off. So that's the hand-me-down one, then? Yeah, that's How many it. birds has had that one? <laughs> one, two, only three. <laughs> only three? That's a fly oh, machine, yeah? I want that one. that <laughs> one? Oh, well, yeah, I bet you would. So this is it. This is what they're going to expect. They can get all the yeah. trappings. Yeah. Look at this lovely bungalow. Lovely area. Pick it up. And look, I've got two lovely dogs out there, so you can play with. Yeah, and the film stars now. And then me. <laughs> and Roy, everybody. And Roy. That's a good boy. Two good boys, isn't you? Who's that? Now, you've always got a beautiful woman Draped over your arm like a cashmere overcoat, ain't ya? Well, I've had some nice ladies, yeah, I must say. Now, what is the thing with it? What do you look for when you're looking for a woman? Just respect. You know, obviously, she's got to be pretty and, and, and slim. I mean, let's face it, my wife, the only thing that went wrong, she got a bit... she got too fat. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like a fat one, do ya? So I said to her, look, in the morning, get your, your gear and the frig off. I said, well, by the way, 
leave the keys to the murk on the windowsill. He said, but you pulled that for me? I said, yeah, why well, he was with me. He looked with me now. Age-wise? Well, it was certainly about 45. About 45. Don't be older than me. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you find it difficult if you're going out with a really beautiful-looking woman? Yeah, it is awkward. And I said, I've got this jealous streak in me. I had a lovely-looking lady called Ashley from Sheffield, and uh, no matter wherever we went, there was people, you know... And we went to um, see Ronnie Biggs and Rio. Even when we went into the hotel, the kids went, Hello, babe! How'd you like to come sailing on my yacht with me? I get out of it. You know, but all, all, all the time. And I knew in time I'd get nicked in a foreign prison, and then I'd, I'd whack a screw in there, and, uh, you know, they'd lock me in a cage and I wouldn't come out. So I had to phone her up and I said, Ashley, I think you're the loveliest lady I've ever been with. I said, I really like her, really love her, I said. But um, I said, I ain't got the temperament for you. What do you mean, Rice? I said, well, no, we're going to call it a day. So, oh, no, please don't. I said, I'm sorry, Donna, I've got to do it, and I put the phone down. So is there anything that... Um, anything you can think of that you wouldn't like a girl to do if she was with you? Other Go than... with another fella. <laughs> <laughs> That's the obvious, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How long you had this jealous, jealous streak? Have you always had it? It was, yeah, it must have always been in there, yeah. Tell me what happened when you come out when you went to the flat where your ex-wife was. Well, what I got out, she was moved to a place in Raynham in a flat, second floor up. And I got out of the car and walked towards, towards it. And my little boy and little girl, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. And I give him a cuddle. I said, where's your mum? She says, upstairs. So I went up the stairs to the second floor and the door was open. And I can hear the voices inside. But oh, I love you, I love you. So I went, oh. so I went in, whacked him, got on him, dragged him, and I slung him over the balcony, two stories up. And as he went over, I went, oh, I've just come out, haven't I? Tell you the truth, that's all I need in my life now is a partner. And I ain't saying it because I'm sitting there, but I'm a good catch because all I want to do is go away on holiday and come back, get the rents, go on holiday. Come back. That's what I want to do in my life now. Just have a have a have a nice nice time. Do you think that you'd be hard to live with? No, I don't think so. No, I'm very quiet normally as that happens. Now, obviously, being a gangster doesn't offer much job security. So, what lies ahead for Stevie and the lovely Amaya? Are you going to marry him? <sighs> I don't know. If she wants him, she will have me. Only if you buy a, uh, over a three-carat diamond ring, Oh, yeah. she told you to say that, didn't she? <laughs> <laughs> she loves... She loves me, she wants me, to marry, she wants to marry me. me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that you're going to end up happily married in a home, doing the garden, <laughs> eh? Have an allotment, I reckon, eh? I reckon we're having loads of little Spaniards yeah. with our own donkeys apiece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A run-down little villa in Spain. Um, uh, running a local little tapas bar. Uh, me sitting outside of me berry, uh, playing your balls. Berry, that's French, isn't it? No, they do it out there and all. When's the last time you went to Spain? Playing with your balls. Me balls. <laughs> <laughs> Steady. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing a berry and playing with me balls. Southern Spain is where all the gangsters go. Some come here to retire, others have it away on their toes. I'm here to find out what it's like for these women, married to shady people in sunny places. What? What's that? Um, he left it here. Yeah. I've come to Spain to look up an old friend of mine, Wensley Clarkson, crime author and expert on gangsters, sunning themselves in the Costa del Crime. It's a funny old spot down here, cos at the end of the day, Everyone thinks all the heavyweights have gone, but what they've done is that they've kept a lower profile. Certain characters have turned up here, partly because they want to keep a different profile and partly because they want to have a, a nicer life in the sunshine. But ultimately, a lot of them end up hating it here, and that's where the problems come for the wives and the mistresses and the families of these people, because here is a really false environment. 
OK, you can pop down to Puerto Banus and buy your girlfriend or your wife a bit of bling bling to keep her quiet and stop her grizzling, but ultimately she's not going to like being locked up in a, in a five-bedroom mansion with a swimming pool in the middle of nowhere while you're away picking up a shipment of cocaine or cannabis or whatever it is. Wensley introduced me to a former nurse who popped up in Spain looking for a good time and big money. She ended up landing one of the biggest gangsters on the Costa. He insisted on concealing his identity. I wonder why. Did you know that he was a gangster? Yeah, it, in my heart of hearts, I probably did know, but I didn't admit it to myself. You don't want to, I think if you're in love with someone as well, you don't really see them for who they are. You just see for them for who you want them to be. I can always tell a tough guy or a dangerous man because it's all in their eyes. Yeah. It's just a look in their eye. And did it's he that have that look? sharp look. Yeah, I think, I think he did. And you knew when you were questioning him that sometimes you had to stop, you know. Was you attracted don't... to that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's reckless, isn't it? Everyone likes a bit of recklessness in their lives, you know. I think it's, it's, life can get a bit boring otherwise. So you have to have that. And that's, that's definitely what attracted me to him, without a doubt. He was one of these characters that had to be in the centre of everything all the time, you know, and he was always known by everybody. Um, and to actually be by his side was like, um, it was like a little bonus, really. Bit um, of a trophy. Kind of, yeah, but I never saw myself as that at the beginning. And then towards the relationship, I kind of, you know, realised that was what was going on. And you have people certainly telling you, well, this is not right, you shouldn't be like this, but you are, you know. And all you see is the nice things in life, you know, the nice shopping, the nice going out for dinner, the nice clothes, the nice jewellery. At the end of the day, you live your life on a knife edge, you don't know what's around that corner, so you can't predict everything. Um, you've got to make yourself as happy as you can while you're here. With so many women like Jo here on the Costa, would you believe there's even a therapist who specialises in gangsters' wives and their problems? And Rita knows what she's talking about. She's been there and lived the life herself. Rita, why did you train to become a therapist in the first place? Because uh, I was in my mid-30s and my life was swimming along lovely with my second husband and children, and my first husband was murdered. And I was completely blown away by it. I was angry, I was hurt, I was wondering why aren't I saying, whoopee, he's gone, he was rotten to me. Um, and then... How did then, he die? How did he die? He, he was... His brother was murdered two months before he was. They, his brother's death actually went down as a misadventure, but I know that he was shot in the head. I know this. His mother knows this. Uh, two months to the day, he was found murdered, pumped full of ketamine. And I was sitting with my son and we were watching the six o'clock news and the news came on that this guy had been shot on his doorstep. And I said to my son, that's the guy who killed your father. And he said, good, he's dead now. That's good, that's some you know, retribution. But I sat on the sofa and I thought, oh, what's wrong with me? So I, I went and saw a counsellor and she completely uh, helped me understand that it was OK to have all these emotions. And I decided that I wanted to have a career, have more than what I, more than what I got, really. I wanted to help people. A beautiful creature trapped all alone in a gilded cage. It's women like Jo who go to Rita for help. I kind of felt quite lonely up there, you know, I wasn't really getting out anywhere sometimes and, you know, I never knew when he was going to turn up and when he wasn't going to turn up, that sort of thing. If you were to, to go out, because he knew so many people on the coast, you know, you felt like everyone was watching you anyway, so even if you did go out and try and enjoy yourself, you didn't feel comfortable. You'd always have an extra pair of eyes on you at the back of your head or wherever. And you know you'd get the questions afterwards, I believe you was out doing this and that, and you know, what were you doing there, who's you with, who's you talking to? And it got to a point where you just thought it's actually easier not to go out. And that actually creates, you know, you're, you're kind of stuck in Cinderella's palace, you know, cleaning away and, and you know, waiting for the next sort of uh, key in the door to come again. He certainly would like to know what I've been up to. If he was away, especially, he'd phone, you know, once in a while and say, Did where you have to make been? sure you was there? when he called? Um, well, I used to say I'd be in the house, you know, because it always made, made the conversation go easier. You know, you felt it makes him feel more comfortable that you're in the house and you're in this, you know, villa up in the hills that no-one else can see you and sort of thing. And, you, you know, it made life easier, saved the argument, so to speak, so, yeah. Gangsters' wives seem to fall into two different categories. One is the wife who, this whole way of life, it's become normal. They've lived it for so long that it becomes what we call normalised. And so the isolation and the loneliness 
becomes uh, what they know, and and they and they become very depressed in within this situation. The other type will be the type who'll be off out partying. Down the coast, posh bird Sally's having a rooting toot in good time with her diamond geezer Tony. Wow! Is this the view? Yeah. Is it fantastic? That's the brothel. The brothel. The cock door. <laughs> the cock door. It's a golden cock, I think. I think that's what it is. After a rather colourful life in England, Sally has come to Spain to get away from it all. But for these wives, nothing's ever that simple. It's fantastic, isn't it? It really is fantastic. Are you a lady of leisure now, then? Yes. Or have you always been a lady I've of leisure? I've been known as Sally, Sally Leisure. That's my surname. Sally. That sounds a bit pervy. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, no, the days, the hours seem to go by quite nicely. Do you like your life now? Love it. This is through to the dining area. Luxury like this comes at a price. While Sally parties, Joel rattles around in her villa, never knowing when her man's going to suddenly show his ugly mug. And, um, got nice terrace, it's onto the garden as well. What? What's that? Um, he left it here. Yeah, it's a bit of a point. <laughs> You're having it. a laugh, and you? It's quite heavy, so I can't lift you up. But, did, yeah. did he leave it here? He did, yeah. I think he left it there to scare me. I don't know. Bastard. <laughs> when you go out buying something and you feel good and you get that instant buzz, you know, that's the chemicals in your brain really working overtime, and they get hooked onto that. He come home and he put, you know, five or six grand in the safe in cash, um, you know, at a time. So, you know, any one point it'd be absolutely chock a block. And I'd be like, where's it all come from? And he'd be like, never you mind, at least you can go shopping, you know. And well, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I want this much. <laughs> Give me this much. I was, you know, I was like, which packets for me? It's great. But... Yeah. <laughs> in fact, one of the reasons I think some of them go into this lifestyle is the money. So they've got really good shops there, yeah? Brilliant shops, really good. Um, if you like designer gear, then Gucci, Prada, DKNY, Hugo Boss, um, Dior, definite favourite. Definitely. You've Brilliant. got accounts at them all? Yep, definitely. And Well, not all of them, most of them. Only my favourite ones. I love them sunglasses. <laughs> I'll swap you. Oh, then. There you go. <laughs> Mine are very last season. <laughs> They're this season, so you look great. Do I look like a welder? <laughs> you look... <laughs> You. It's all huge, I feel like a fly. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, my guide that. dog's over there. <laughs> so how do you like the pool? It's my nice, eh? I think it's blinding, absolutely blinding. What I realised was there was a certain type of gangster that was coming to me. They've come out to Spain and they've wanted, actually, to go straight. And they've wanted to have good lives for their wives and their children. So there's, there are certain type that have done their crime, done their time, come out here wanting to start afresh, wanting to go straight, but have found themselves being pulled into the underbelly here. Why Spain? And how do you end up on somewhere like the Costa del Crime? Well, have you met Tony? With a minder. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Lloyd, the minder. Well, he has, he has to be there, because people don't sort of know too much about us down here, and um, we don't want them to know too much about us down here. Um, so what, tell me tell what, what rubber stamp you're coming out here, then. It's my first husband, who is a farmer on Romney Marsh, um, who I was married to for about four or five years. He inherited... His family inherited yet more millions. They owned Dungeness and all that sort of area. And he was having a fight with his father over money, so he shot his father, and then he shot himself. Dead? Dead. Bang, 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 bang. Shot himself. It took him five days to die. Five days? Oh, it was so sad. It was awful, but that's when I... thought <laughs> that was so sincere. Uh, oh, but he know it was. No, yeah, I've, well, I've been in love with all my husbands. That's got to be the quote of the year, yes. that. <laughs> well, you see, I think it's a prerequisite to marriage, isn't it? I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Being honest. <laughs> and I just thought, my God, what lunacy, you know, it's all about money and not about how you feel about people and whatever. And I've lived a very rich lifestyle, but I wanted to be happy, basically. And then uh, I met Tony. I pulled him in the street. I really, how? I pulled him. How? I how looked did you him pull up him? and down. And I said, uh, I said, I've just got to go and do something. You go to the Leon d'Or and I'll be there in half an hour. And he said, OK. We didn't leave the apartment for three days when we first met. Oh, my God. Mm. <laughs> Very naughty. Great fun. So now you're in love mm. with Tony. Yeah. I didn't really want to fall in love with Tony because he doesn't own an acre. He doesn't own a plot of land, a blade, blade of grass. Tony, Tony, Tony has got this lush, lush, lush apartment, hasn't Tony? Yeah. 
Now, that's what we've got since we've been down here, though. So you work down here? Yeah, Tony works. I don't work. Tony works? Yeah, Tony's a bookmaker. I want to ask what? Bookmaker. Mm. Mm. Tony's very successful at what he does. And is it, you know, I mean, could he get arrested or banged up? Or um... Anything? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he can, cos he's not really breaking the law, cos there's no real law to break. And that's what we say. That's what he's told me, and I say, yes, darling, that's it. Tony's business turns over a lot of, lot of money. And he'll turn over eight grand a day, sometimes. A day? Blinking blind. And that is all holiday makers. I'm amazed sometimes. You see these little families come in, you know, little baby in a pushchair and whatever, and then the husband will say, all right, darling, you go down to the beach, I'll be five minutes. So the wife and the kids go down to the beach, and all of a sudden he pulls out of his pockets a wad of money. The holiday money. The holiday money. And he bets it. 100 euros a race, 100 euros a race. And it's just appalling. See, and I'd like to go up to him and say, you know, go and buy your wife a bloody tummy tuck. Tony has taught me one thing over here, you just do not have an opinion over here. You cannot have an opinion because, well, otherwise, we well, just can't have an opinion. Conscience. You just can't. If they make a bet, like a credit bet, and, uh, and then they walk out and they don't pay, <clears throat> Well, they do pay. In comes Lloyd. Well, yes, he just growls. He's got the most fantastic growl. Growl, Lloyd. <laughs> he does, you see? He scares me. <laughs> Dale Winton. No, but all he, does, no, all he does is he just walks past people and he just looks at them and just growls. And all of a sudden their wallets open up and they say, oh, that tone, that's that bet I owe you. Did somebody not pay? No, they did pay. Because they paid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are wonderful. You're all art, really. <laughs> well... <laughs> But they don't, and they and they and the money that goes through Tony's hands is amazing. So and people know that. So that's why if he has to go to the bank or whatever, Lloyd Roy's shop. Yeah, they don't say we're colluding with it. That's not the words they use, but that's what's happening. And then they they say, well, they're going off to prison. I'm going to be looked after by their mates or the stash that's been hidden. And so the the money and the lifestyle becomes a compensation. And I've got a great house. You know, I've got a great lifestyle and. I'm not doing too badly, I don't think, out of it all, to be fair, so... Um, it comes with a price, though. It does come with a price, definitely. The, the gangsters' wives I've worked with, they know very well that if they leave their husbands, the minute their husband sees them with another man, because they're very possessive of their women, usually he's killed or, or they're killed. Did you think, oh, well, it's all right for him to do it, I'll go and get a boyfriend? Or is that easier said than done? I think it's definitely easier said than done. I don't think you'd feel comfortable, to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, but when I was when I was married to Ron, he said to me, 50% of the people wouldn't go with you for respect and the other 50% wouldn't go through fear. Mm. Now go and find yourself a boyfriend. I guess you've got to think as well, I mean, a lot of people know him on the coast, so not, no one will come near you anyway, you mm. know, and that that was one of the major factors and i think even if i did try and you know have a have an affair or whatever it was you know just to keep myself entertained or you know to get a bit of um intimacy i think he'd find out anyway i really do and it what do you think he would have done to the chap if he'd found out i no? don't know no i wouldn't like to say i don't see any way out and that's really sad for a therapist to have to say that but that is, they're probably the most tragic kind of women that I've ever worked with because most women do have a choice and they don't have any choices. They've, they've, they've chosen this way. Is there anyone buried under it? It's um, rather deep, actually. It's very deep, yeah, actually. I bet you never get in it, though, do you? It's funny, do you know when you've got a pool, you don't use it as much as, you, as you'd like if you don't have one. It's always the same, isn't it? You know when you get a pool. When you've got a pool, yeah. <laughs> I've got the one inside as well, so... I live in London, darling. <laughs> yeah. Is it dangerous down here? Yes, bloody dangerous down here. And you can't be too flash. And we don't have a car down here. We just have a guy who drives us. If we have a car down here, you know, you have a Porsche down here, people are going to steal it. Or people are going to think that you are so rich that your apartment is going to be so flash that they're going to come and burgle you. Yeah. Lloyd's here. <laughs> Money must yeah. be here. Yeah. I'll have a look about it in a minute. <laughs> yeah, you won't find it. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> I'll duff it up. you only got one in there, look. <laughs> one hand behind your back. He doesn't know where it is either. Doesn't he? No. Uh, let me and you get together and uh, handcover and beat her and get the money. Well, you don't have any handcuffs, though. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Steady. <laughs> Oh dear. It may be a life of luxury, 
But nearly all gangsters' wives find out in the end that if it looks too good to be true, then it usually is. <laughs> After talking to these women, it has made me reflect on my own life. Why did I marry a schizophrenic homosexual murderer? <laughs> By talking to these gangsters' wives, I'm not trying to glamorise this world of violence and crime or trivialise its effects, as Flanagan knows only too well. How long have you been around these sort of geezers? Oh, it sounds terrible, but I was a convent girl. I came out of a convent when I was 15, and immediately I think I came into that world. I saw a person get shot when I was 17 in a dance hall, so I already was around that gang and that's what a gangster is it's a member of a gang that's what the oxford dictionary describes it as you can't hijack a security fan on your own so really they are a member of a gang so if, are scouts if they want to kill no, gangsters them, are brownies <laughs> and therefore I knew what violence was at a very, very young age. I mean, I've had a lot of tragedy, as, a lot, as much as excitement. A lot of tragedy in my life. A lot more excitement, though. Um, yeah, probably. <laughs> a lot more excitement and danger. and danger. Do you like the danger side of it? I mean, if you're around I've all these I've always lived dangerously, I think. To be a gangster's wife or a gangster's mo or mistress, whatever you call it, mm. You live on the edge. On the edge. And that, I certainly found that really tiresome. I found it so tiresome. Very sometimes. tiresome, because you can't get up in the morning, can you? You never got up one morning, did you, Kate? And not think, oh, I can have a peaceful day today. No. There no. always had to be something. Like, a wife gets up and she knows she's got either a prison visit that day, whether she's taking her kids on a ferry or a train or a car. No matter how she takes them, she's got to drag kids to a prison. She has to step aside sometimes when he wants to see his friends, when she probably does want to see him. She has to arrange anything that he wants to arrange outside, make sure his parcels go into him. If he wants anything particular that he is allowed to have, if not, she's got to arrange a way that she gets them into him that's against the law, but he'll get them. Did you witness things and was not a party to, but you played a small part well, because of dangerous of, things. Of dangerous things that you arranged visits between certain people. There was money that had to be earned to supply them. These crazy people you had to go and meet at dead, at no, dead of night, you know, in cars, in car parks and things. But we went, didn't we? Talking to Flan reminded me of the highs and lows of being a gangster's wife. So maybe now I ought to ask Rita for some help. Give me some therapy. Why did I marry a schizophrenic homosexual murderer? Kate, <laughs> why do you think you did? <laughs> I ain't got, I ain't got you Scooby. You ain't got a Scooby. <laughs> so, <laughs> Ronnie, <laughs> what did you think when you looked at him? You I thought, thought he, you thought he's a gangster, right? And what, you was intrigued? No, not no? at all, because I wasn't really enthralled with gangsters and wasn't really interested. I was a self-made woman, if you like. I got my own independence. And then I had to go to see Ronnie at the, the, the postal strike and take some letters. And I really didn't want to go. And in the end, I went. And out come this man who... The only way I can describe him is he held my attention. He had something that was charismatic about him. Mm. He, he was a man who didn't want the normal things from me that most men want. He was a man who didn't ask anything of me other than to be there for him. He put other demands on me towards, you know, d d further into the relationship. There was other demands made of me, demands that uh, were totally alien to me. I was drawn into this world, this underworld, if you like, mm. just screaming and kicking, thinking, God, what am I getting into? But then I was in it. I was up to here and I couldn't get out. There's nobody was pulling me out. I was all Ooh. of a sudden, from the moment, the first meeting with him, and he said, I'm going to marry you, it was like I had no choice in the so matter. For a year, bewitched. for a year, I was going, I will leave off, I'm not marrying you. You're, you're, you're gay, <laughs> please. Mm. But from the moment he said, I'm going to marry you, my whole life changed. Everybody knew that I was Ronnie Cray's wife. All of a sudden, I became not Kate anymore. I was never, ever introduced from day one as, this is Kate. 
it was always, this is Kate Cray, wife of. I lost me in all this shit going on around me. I lost it all. Just because I was married to this man, I lost my business. No one wanted to do business with Kate Cray, wife of. I lost my home, I lost everything because I was married to this man. Is it some kind of daring thing that you you would do, not just you, Kate, but any gangster's wife? Is it some is this there some adrenaline level that you're trying to that you've got that you're trying to keep going? Is it that you don't want to be bored because lots of people have very low boredom? Thresholds. See, I didn't have any of that. No, that was it's... the weirdest thing. I didn't have any of those things. I am the most confident woman yeah. ever. I don't need anything to bolster me up. I don't need any of that. And what's it like being you now? Being me, being me is just lush. <laughs> I like being me. I like where I am now and I like me again. I don't have to witness all that anymore. I don't have to be involved in any of that anymore. And there's nothing like a straight pair note. And I think that to go to prison and to be the wife of a prisoner, to be the wife of a gangster, is probably one of the hardest things you'll ever do in your life. Mm. And you're very, very lucky if you survive it. Mm. And with that, it's good night from me. And it's good night from her. <laughs> <laughs> Time's up, love. I've got to go. <laughs> Gangsters' wives come from all sorts of different backgrounds and their stories are as different as they are. They live life in the fast lane, on the edge, knowing that any minute the luxury could disappear along with their man. Some gangsters want a trophy wife, others fall in love. But all the wives have one thing in common. They know that luxury comes at a price. And if you end up with a gangster, remember, he's not just for Christmas, he may get life. <laughs>